I reviewed the marriage registration form and submitted it to the clerk along with my fiancé, Chris. The clerk said, Let me check this for you, and took the form. While we waited, Chris walked over to his family, looking happy. I thought about how we could build a happy family together and get along well with his family. But then, I overheard Chris and his family talking, and their words shocked me. They said things like, Once she submits the marriage form, she won't be able to escape us easily, and I finally got my servant. I won't have to work now. They even praised Chris for doing well and talked about how they could live luxuriously. One of them said, I'll let her do all the housework and we can live gracefully from now on. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I was frozen in surprise. The clerk, who had heard the conversation too, looked at me with wide eyes. Maybe Chris and his family were so excited that they didn't realize they were speaking so loudly. The clerk then whispered to me, There's no problem with the form, but I'll give this back to you, and gently handed it back. I whispered, Thank you so much, and put the form in my bag. My name is Mary, and I'm a 30-year-old office worker. I worked really hard to get into a top high school and university, and then landed a job at one of the world's most famous eight companies. I focused on doing my best at work, and I was promoted to section manager by the age of 30. The more I worked, the more results I saw, which I enjoyed because it suited my personality. But sometimes I feel lonely. It's been a long time since I had a boyfriend. When I see my friends getting married or having babies and looking happy, I sometimes feel sad and wonder if I'll be alone for the rest of my life. Mary, what are you thinking about? My coworker Justin asked. Oh, hi, Justin. Did I look like I was deep in thought? I replied. You looked like something was bothering you, he said. It's nothing, but thank you for worrying, I responded. Justin walked away, but I started to think, maybe I really do need to find a boyfriend. I asked a friend for advice, and she threw a home party for me. That's where I met Chris. He's the same age as me and also works for an it company, so we had a lot in common to talk about. We started dating, and things went smoothly as we got to know each other better and better. Chris is very family-oriented, and I got to meet his family early on. I was often invited to his parents' house for dinner. Mary, nice to meet you. I'm Chris's mom, Catherine. She introduced herself. And I'm his dad, Mark, his father said. Nice to meet you. I'm Mary, I replied. Then his sister joined in. Hi, I'm Chris's sister, Kate. I didn't know Chris had such a cute girlfriend. His family seemed really nice. Do you have any food you don't like? they asked. No, I can eat anything, I said. Chris used to be a picky eater, his mom mentioned. Oh, that was just a childhood thing, Chris chimed in. What did Chris hate? I asked. He hated broccoli and asparagus. I had to shred them and hide them in meat, his mom said, laughing. Mom, stop it. You're embarrassing me, Chris protested. They were such a friendly and happy family, just what I always wanted. When I was in middle school, my parents got divorced. I lived with my dad, while my sister lived with our mom. My sister and I didn't get along very well, so I wasn't too sad when we were separated. The reason for my parents' divorce was that they both loved their work and didn't want to handle the housework. In the end, they decided to split up, each taking one child, so they could equally share the responsibilities. Both my dad and mom had high incomes, so we never had any trouble living. My dad wasn't indifferent, but he mostly let me be on my own and gave me a lot of freedom. I really wanted to become independent, and I thought the best way to do that was to get into a top university and land a good job. So I studied really hard. Eventually, I was able to get a job at one of the most famous it companies in the world. But even with all that success, I had never really felt the warmth of family love. That's why I adored Chris's warm and close-knit family. Think of us as your other family, Chris once told me. I guess he said that because he knew about my situation. I was regularly invited to his parents' house for dinner. His sister Kate even started treating me like a real sister and often asked me for advice about work. After graduating from university, Kate got a job at a company that was pretty awful, long hours, no overtime pay, and way too much work. So she quit and started working part-time at an ice cream shop. Now she's looking for a full-time job and often asks for my advice. Thank you, Mary. This is really helpful, she would say. It's okay, Kate. I like talking to you, I'd reply. Mary, you're like a real big sister. I've always wanted a big sister, Kate told me one day. 
Oh, that's so sweet. My own sister never thanked me for anything and wasn't as nice as you at all, I said. Really? Then let's go to lots of places together, Kate suggested. Great, let's do that. I agreed. Wow, I'm so happy. There are so many cafes and restaurants I want to visit with you, Kate said excitedly. Okay, then let's go. We both have a day off, I replied. Yay, I'm so excited. Kate was really cute, and I was glad to get to know her better. It was around this time that Chris surprised me by proposing. Mary, will you marry me? I want to build a warm family with you, he said. I was so happy when Chris proposed to me, and we immediately told his family the good news. Oh, you're finally getting married, his mom exclaimed. Finally, Chris proposed to you. And now you're going to be my sister-in-law, Kate added excitedly. His family was thrilled, and they started talking about the wedding plans right away. Chris looked overjoyed, too. That day, we had dinner with them and then headed home. When I got back to work, everyone congratulated me. Mary, are you getting married? They asked. Yes, I'm finally getting married, I replied, feeling happy and proud. Congratulations, they all said, and I thanked them. On our next day off, we were invited to Chris's parents' house again, this time for lunch. On the way there, Chris said, I have something important to tell you later. Okay, I replied curious but expecting it to be something good since Chris seemed so happy. When we arrived at his parents' house, there was a stuffed turkey on the table. Are you celebrating something today? I asked. Chris's mom smiled and said, I'm just so happy thinking that Mary is going to be my daughter-in-law. She looked so sweet and shiny with joy as she said it. We opened some cold beers and enjoyed the turkey, chatting happily. After a while, Chris suddenly said, Oh, I almost forgot to tell you something important. I'm thinking of going to the marriage registry today. What? I was taken back. Actually, I've already prepared the paperwork, Chris continued. I was surprised. Sure, we were going to the marriage registry eventually. But why today? Is today a special day? I asked. No, it's not like that, Chris said. Then why are we doing it today? I asked, still confused. I just wanted to get it done as soon as possible, he explained. But why not wait until after the wedding? I suggested. The wedding is still a long way off, he replied. We had already visited several restaurants and found one we really liked for our wedding. However, it was a very popular place, so we could only reserve it for a few months later. I think we should wait until after the wedding, I suggested, feeling unsure about rushing things. No, I want to be married to you as soon as possible, Chris insisted. The sooner the better for us too, his mom added. Mary, I agree with Chris. You should get married as soon as possible, his dad chimed in. We had been planning to find an apartment that was conveniently located between both our workplaces. But then Chris said, yeah, about that, we were thinking of moving into this house together. What? I was completely surprised. I had assumed we'd be living on our own. I thought we'd be getting our own place. I mean it takes time to find an apartment, and we also have to prepare for the wedding. Chris explained. That's why I think it would be better to live at my parents' house first and take our time finding an apartment. Chris might have had a point, but the idea of living with his family made me uneasy. I didn't have a great experience living with my own family, and although Chris's family members were all nice, I wondered if it would really be okay. Chris's mom reassured me, we're already ready to welcome you into our family. We understand your situation, so you don't have to worry about anything. After hearing that, I thought I might be able to live with them. Okay, thank you so much, I said, feeling a bit more comfortable. Then let's go to the marriage registry, Kate suggested, and everyone, including Chris and his parents, agreed. I finally said, okay, let's do it, and we all decided to go to the marriage bureau together. Kate, who hadn't been drinking, drove us there. I realized I might have had a bit too many beers and was feeling a little nervous. But as soon as we arrived, I felt the need to go to the bathroom. Before submitting the marriage registration form, I went to the bathroom. When I came back, I saw Chris's parents and Kate chatting happily. I rechecked the form and then submitted it to the clerk along with Chris. The clerk said, Let me check this for you, and took the form. While we waited, Chris walked over to his family, looking pleased. I felt hopeful about building a happy life with him and getting along well with his family. Just as I was thinking this, I overheard parts of their conversation that filled me with dread. One of them said, once they submit the marriage registration form, she won't be able to escape us easily. 
Another added, I finally got my servant, I won't have to work anymore. Someone praised Chris, saying, you did really well. From now on, we can live luxuriously. I want a new purse, someone said, and another added, I want golf clubs. We can let her do all the housework. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. What were they talking about? I froze in shock, and I noticed the clerk had also heard their conversation. Her eyes were wide with surprise. Maybe Chris and his family were so excited that they didn't realize they were speaking so loudly. The clerk looked at me and whispered, There's no problem with the form, but I'll give this back to you. She gently handed the marriage registration form back to me. I whispered, Thank you so much, and quickly put it in my bag. Just as I did, Chris returned. Has it been submitted with no problems? He asked. Yes, I lied, then added, Let's go home. I followed Chris and his family to the car. They had always seemed like a warm, friendly family, but now they just looked frightening. They drove me home that day. But the next morning, Chris told me that since we were married, we should start living together at his parents' house. I agreed and decided to move in, determined to find out if what I overheard was really true. Of course, I pretended that I had canceled my apartment plans and assured Chris that I would handle everything myself. I mentioned that I would sell my belongings to a recycling company soon. With that settled, we moved into his parents' house. However, as soon as I arrived, Chris's family's attitude changed dramatically. Mary, I manage all the finances in this house, his mother said sternly. So, you need to put your entire salary into the household account. What? I was shocked, but Chris nodded in agreement. My mom will take care of it. She'll give you money for lunch and anything else you need. And she'll handle the household finances efficiently. Chris explained as if it were no big deal. Really? I asked, still trying to process what was happening. That's right, so don't worry about handing over your entire salary, his mom continued. Oh, and one more thing, you'll be responsible for all the housework. What? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Do you have a problem with that? His mom asked sharply. I'm working, so it's a bit much to handle all the housework on top of that. I replied, trying to reason with them. Oh, are you such a coward that you won't even try? She snapped back. What? I was stunned. Shut your mouth and start doing the chores, Chris's dad said, giving me the scariest look I'd ever seen from him. Even Kate chimed in. I like your brown bags. Buy some for me too. Chris added, Mary, you're now my wife and a member of this family, so you need to do everything we tell you to. At that moment, I realized this was their true nature. They had been planning to take advantage of me from the start. I don't want to, I said firmly. What? What'd you just say? Chris's mom asked, blaring at me. I can't accept everything you just told me. I replied, standing my ground. I won't do all the housework and I won't give you my entire salary, I said firmly. When I said this, Chris and his family became furious. Hey Mary, what are you talking about? You're our daughter-in-law now. Just do what we tell you, Chris's mom said, her voice full of anger. Your only value is to make our lives easier, added Chris's dad. I'm not your daughter-in-law, I replied, standing my ground. What? Chris's mom was stunned. You had that conversation at the marriage bureau, didn't you? I asked. After what I overheard, I decided not to register our marriage. Their faces turned pale. Oh no, did you really not submit the form? Chris's mom asked urgently. I already threw the marriage registration form in the trash, I said. I can't live with people who take advantage of me. Let's just break up. Chris slumped to the floor, clearly devastated. I left the house immediately. It turned out that Chris's family had already planned an overseas trip for the four of them, including booking a luxury hotel and first-class airline tickets, all based on the assumption they'd be getting my salary. Since I broke up with Chris the day before the trip, they had to pay a lot of cancellation fees. Chris asked me to cover the cancellation fees, but of course, I refused and blocked him from contacting me. Now, they're about $50,000 in debt and are all arguing with each other. It seems their only connection was money, and their relationships weren't very strong. Mary, did you cancel the marriage? Justin asked when I ran into him. Oh, Justin, you heard about that already. I said. Rumors spread fast, he noted, looking amused. You can laugh if you want. I said. I'm not laughing, I'm actually happy, Justin admitted, though he looked a bit embarrassed. 
Why's that? I asked. Because it means I have a chance, he replied. A few months later, Justin asked me out and recently proposed to me. I'm so happy now. Chris and his family were only nice to me at the beginning to take advantage of me. I'm relieved I discovered their true nature before we got married. I was curious about what happened next with Justin, but for now, I wish Mary a happy marriage this time around. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.